I don't know if that's any better. Hopefully. Oh, yay. I guess that is better because right away it came up. Whoops. Hearing myself on echo. Yay. <laughs> that's much better. Okay. So we are, um, so that's weird. So for those of you out there who do Periscope, this has happened to me twice in a row now, once with past brush and then today um, where I've had some problems with the connection and I just went back in, out and back in again and that seemed to help. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, so we've got four different, um, hi B, how are you? Jerry, Aaron, everybody. All right, so I've got four different sizes of round brush. From uh, I have a one, a four, an eight, and a sixteen. Um, I've got some watercolor pencils. Everything is really good with me right now. I'm still drinking my coffee, but otherwise, <laughs> why is it so right? Um, I've got some Sigmund pig. Sig blah blah blah. <laughs> I can't talk this morning either. Evidently. Um, Stadler, I don't know Sigmund, I don't know who Sigmund is. I've got some Stadler pigment liner pens. Now this came in a set of four. I got these at Staples and um, I used some Staples Rewards money. Oh yay Mark, I'm good. Um, and then we've got some feathers here. I've got my Daniel Smith watercolors and we've got some watercolor paper here that I've cut into bookmark size. And I have these watercolor sleeves. I mean watercolor sleeves. Holy cow, I'm having trouble talking this morning. I should have had more coffee. Um, these are bookmark sleeves. Now, back when in my craft shop days or gift shop days when I was selling lots of arts and craftsy things, I did a lot of... Um, yeah, that's a good idea, Jerry. Can you, can you PM me and remind me? And um, you know what? I'm going to blog on the day of the Watercolor Wednesday. I'm going to blog that week. Um, I'll try to do it on Monday with the materials list and sources. Um, so um, I cut some watercolor paper to fit in these bookmark sleeves. Now, these bookmark sleeves are from clearbags.com. I used to sell lots of bookmarks in my um, gift shop crafty days, and I still have a couple hundred of these left. So I thought we would do some feather bookmarks, um, especially with um, Christmas coming up or and, and or you know whatever holidays that you celebrate, gift giving holidays. So um, we're going to work on that today. Yeah, that's a fabulous idea, Jerry. Good thought. That would be why she's one of my admins on my Facebook group. All right. I also pulled out some feathers for inspiration. Thank you because I already thought I saw one. Um, now, I did also find a book, which um, when I get a chance later today, I will go onto my website, onto my blog page. This is my website. I will go onto my blog page, which is on there, and I will put the Amazon link for the book um, on there. And I found a book called Bird Feathers, a field... Uh, I think it's a guide, it's Bird Feathers, A Guide to North American Birds or something like that. Um, and it's like an Autobond uh, bird watching book, but it's all about feathers. Wouldn't that be a great resource book for paint for watercolor painting? So I, I found that today. So I'm gonna um, list the book on here. I found some feathers though in my stash I thought we would use for inspiration this morning. Yeah, see, right? I thought the same thing. I'm gonna start with this one just because I think it's the most interesting. And the first thing, of course, that we're going to do is a sketch. Now, you can do a sketch in just pencil pencil, of course, um, or you can do it in water-soluble pencil. Yeah, right? I mean, and I, you know, I think it just would be a fabulous resource book in your art room. I'm going to start with, yeah, I love that stencil, of course, because it's mine. And, you know, if you go to my YouTube channel, I'm going to use this one. If you go to my YouTube channel and you look up the Watercolor Wednesday playlist, there is one very early on of a feather um, that's done differently than what we're going to do this morning, but um, it's very pretty feather. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch out my feather shape inspired by 
the real feather that's sitting next to me. The first thing I'm going to do is just lightly with this water soluble pencil, I'm going to sketch in this spine of the feather. I don't know what it's called, but the center part, this, I just call it the spine. Good morning, everybody. So, and it doesn't necessarily have to be any more complicated than that. The one thing I will say is I, I'm going to make the bottom a little fatter. And I am good morning, and I'm going to taper it going up. There we go. Now I'm going to look at my feather for the shape. I, I do too, little known fact, I have a collection of feathers in my in my art room. A jar of them. These I grabbed these out of the jar this morning. So I'm just drawing the basic shape of my feather. <laughs> I just keep them, you know, I have this little area that's sort of, you know, one of my friends that came over to visit called it a little altar area. Honestly, when I started sticking things over there, I didn't think about turning it into something like that. I guess, I guess it is. I don't know. It's just a collection of things that kind of, you know, have some importance to me. Um, crystals and um, actually some rocks and things and beads and things. Some from my grandmother who passed away and just different things. So just if you don't have a real feather, just, you know, sketch a feather shape. You can always go on to like Pinterest is a really great resource for inspiration photos. But I'm going to, I put this book into my sh Amazon shopping cart this morning. Okay, so there we have our sketch. I almost stuck my pencil in the water. <laughs> how, how bad would that be? <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. I love the hearts. <sighs> Pinterest is fabulous. I love Pinterest. I'm going to start with um, sort of a medium brush. Um, this is, um, yeah, chocolate hearts today. I love chocolate. It's not good for me, but this is the number four. And I'm going to look at my feather and I'm going to actually start with a uh, Payne's gray or neutral tint. Actually, maybe new this is neutral tint. That'll work. Neutral tint is like a translucent gray color. And I'm going to go along Yes, that is my YouTube channel. So I'm going to go along next to the spine and I'm going to bring some of it out like this. I'm using the feather in front of me as inspiration for where to place my marks. I'm going to get the brush wet before I get too far. Oops, I just dropped a rag into the garbage. Not the first time, won't be the last time. <laughs> I'm not getting my paper very wet because I'm trying to control where the paint goes. I am wanting to blur my lines just a little bit and keep that edge kind of wet so that it will blend with the next color I'm going to put on there, which is going to be... Um, I'm going to take a little bit of quidocridone gold down here. And then I'm going to mix it with some, add some water. And then it's a little bit on the orangey side, so I'm going to mix it with some uh, sepia. Or no raw umber. Yep, that's perfect. That was perfect. Okay. And I'm going to put that in while the paint's still relatively wet. Not too much. Try to keep the edge. Remember to go in with just a clean, you know, brush that's damp and you can lift up some pigment if you've put too much 
Um, you can also, you know, bl blend those lines a bit. I only do watercolor on Wednesday. Every other Monday I do um, acrylic um, and we do Monday with DecoArt using DecoArt acrylic products. Okay, I like that. Let's keep going. And these little hand painted bookmarks are just, you know, they're, they make a really great gift. They're, they're quick, they're easy, and when I was in the gift shop days, if you're going to do a craft show, I would do one hand-painted, and then I would color copy it onto really nice photo paper, and then I would um, sell copies cheaper. The hand-painted ones were more. I'm going to pull some of the pigment out down here, and I'm also going to activate some of that pencil I have going on in here. Take a little bit of our goldish brown color. Now remember if you lose any of your spaces that you want to stay white or fairly light, you can always go in later with some uh, white, Chinese white. You can actually go in with white acrylic. Um, just have fun with the process. Don't worry so much about, um, you know, getting things perfect. In my mind, art's not about, about being perfect anyways. See, I like that right there. I don't want to type. So for the original paintings, I would usually do about, for a bookmark that didn't take me very long, you know, made no more than $10, usually like about $6.50. And the, co and the copies were um, $1.25. And I sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of the copies. I can't even tell you guys how many. Exactly. Perfect is in the eye of the beholder. I love that. Remember, as we're here painting our feather, that, and if somebody can, like Jerry, maybe if you're online still, you can post a link. To our Facebook my Facebook group on the Facebook group um, one of the things that's on there is a watercolor Wednesday list with a link to the YouTube playlist but also um, it has a um, file for upcoming episodes of watercolor Wednesday here on Periscope and um, different things you guys have requested to see and you can add to the list and request certain things thank you Jerry And see this down here, we have a white spot right there. Can you see that? Let me hold it up a little bit right there. I love that. I'm not going to touch that at all. I love the way that turned out. Now, if you use anything for this besides black, it's going to make it more interesting. So I would definitely, you know, recommend black is fine if that's what you have, but something that's like a dark blue or a dark gray, or um, it's going to be more interesting in your paintings than just plain old black. And you can add a pop of black on top of this, you know, if you think it needs it. I love that. That looks great. Okay, let's do the other side. Now, the other side on this feather is a little different. I almost stuck my brush in my coffee, didn't I? <laughs> Oops. All right, so let's see what we can do with this other side. It's more spotted. I'm going to turn this around this way. I think it might be easier. So I'm just barely touching my brush to the feather and I'm doing less of a straight line and more of a line of dots because it, that's my impression of what's going on on the real feather. 
Now I don't want to get too far before I put just a little bit of water on some of them. I don't want to do even all of them. I just want to do some. And I think I want to spread the pigment out a bit here along the spine. Thank you for all the hearts. Now, when you finish your feather and you're doing it this way, remember that you could just leave it. You don't have to do anything with the pen, the pens, but if you want to outline or highlight certain features, you definitely could do that with uh, the Staedtler pens or really any pen that you have in your stash. You want to probably test it and see, you know, how they work over watercolor. I have a carbon ink pen that works too, both over and under watercolor. And there is a video on my YouTube channel about pens that work over watercolor and under watercolor. Now, before we get too far, we're going to go in here with the brownish gold color that we mixed up. I have to send my mom to hang on wall. She had a bird business years ago. Yeah, see, this kind of thing, especially if you have somebody who, you know, had something like that in their lives and they really love birds, um, this is like a great gift for them. Um, little known fact, <laughs> I like to paint feathers. I like to paint birds. I like to watch birds. I don't, I'm, but I'm not a huge bird fan. <laughs> I'm always, I guess, thinking they're going to poop on my head. <laughs> Little known fact. I love that way that's turning out right there. And, and we're only using a couple colors here. We're not, you know, using the whole rainbow. Now, of course, you could do this impression of this feather. Hello. I know, right? Um, in a dark color and a light color, but and it could be, you know, the impression of the natural feather, but without the, uh, but in non-natural colors. Well, one of my daycare babies, when I had daycare, though, is, should have a very lucky life. She got pooed on. <laughs> poor kid. <laughs> we were out at a store and we were getting back in the car actually. I was out with the daycare kids and bird, bird pooped right on her head. <laughs> Good morning Michelle. Remember when you're painting that you want a variety of tones of color, light colors, dark colors. That will really make your painting pop. Leaving white space. See, I, I, I guess I needed more coffee this morning. Thank you. Leaving white space will also give your painting some interest. I'm going to go in with some black. Now this is just, this is black. I'm not going to use a lot of black, but putting the, yeah, I will. Hang on a second. The black will um, make the um, other colors pop because it's darker than the neutral tint. You don't need to put a lot of it, but it's going to make it pop. Okay, so uh, let me see if I can zoom in for you guys. I have to get up on the footstool, so hang on. Is that better?
So there's one. Now you definitely could let this dry and then go in with some of your black pen. Um, we are going to do another one and let this dry naturally instead of um, pushing it. So let's do another one. Make sure I get the, there we go. Um, so I've got a couple more feathers here. Let's do the black one. Um, I've got some really dark ink tense pencils, but I don't want to use, I have one that's, what is this, ink black, but I think I want to use sepia instead, which is a little bit of a brown color. I can do a weird color. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let me still use this one to outline. I need to turn it this way to um, do my drawing. There we go. Okay. All right. So let's draw another feather. And I'm going to, I have to turn it this way because I am right handed. So. Although I know I've been doing lots of left-handed art, I am right-handed. <laughs> so again, first let's do the spine. And again, this is a sepia-colored um, water-soluble pencil. Isn't she having great ideas today? I love that. Okay, let's make the bottom a little bit fatter than the top. And then let's do a shape to our feather. We're going to use this black one as an inspiration for shape. Let's see. Now again, you know, you can use things like your real feathers or this feather book that I'm going to order for inspiration. That doesn't mean you have to copy them exactly. You know, just have some fun with it. I kind of love that this one's a little bit mangled. Okay, and I think this is one I found um, in Las Vegas at um, one of the museums we were at. I was walking back to the car. It was sitting on the, on the ground. Everywhere I go, I find a feather. I don't know what the big message is in that, but... All right, so there's our feather sketch. Water-soluble pencil again. You ready? Okay, so I got out four sizes of brush. Must be a sign in my path. That's the only thing I can think of. My sister, um, who's very much more knowledgeable about that than I am, uh, my little sister, she said it's um, um, has something to do with uh, messages, receiving messages. So, um, yeah. Um, these are not 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 a problem. So these are that's what we're here for. For you guys to ask me questions rather than me just do a tutorial on um, YouTube. Um, so these are ink tense pencils, but you could use any kind. I also have Crayola watercolor pencil. Um, when you're doing a sketch like this, if you want it to look very watercolory and you don't want to have to deal with your pencil lines or erasing pencil lines, you just want it to be about the paint and the shape, then you want to use a water soluble pencil. It's just easier. I call, I tell people, you know, I am not the frugal crafter. That's Lindsay. Uh, I am the lazy crafter. So if there's an easy, lazy way around something, I'm going to tell you about it because I like that. <laughs> um, so using a water-soluble pencil just makes things easier. Um, and um, Crayola works just fine. Um, you can get them for less than $10 pretty much anywhere. Uh, I was at Hobby Lobby yesterday, and I think... Um, they, watercolor paints were less than $4. They had some brushes that were less than $4. And they had watercolor pencils that were less than $10. Um, like Crayola is just fine until you get used to the medium and you decide you really love it. And then if that happens, then you can decide to invest in the really nice stuff. And my favorite watercolor pencils are the Derwent Inktense. 
Um, I also like the Prima um, watercolor pencils. Okay, so now we're going to do this, and Jerry has asked for non-traditional colors, so let's do that. We're going to go with one of my favorite Daniel Smith colors, which is Ultramarine Turquoise. I mean, you know, it's a dark turquoise, so how do you not just love that, right? So again, we're going to go near the spine. Oh, sorry, this is Strathmore 140 pound watercolor paper. Um, it is this one, 400 series. Sorry, 400 series Strathmore watercolor paper. I usually use Strathmore. I do have some arches. Strathmore is very budget friendly. Most of your art supply stores and craft stores have Strathmore on sale periodically. And I'm always looking for paper on sale. If they have arches on sale, I you know, I and they have had, then I stock up, but um, those kind of sales are few and far between normally. So when you're using non-traditional colors and if you're using an inspiration feather, then you want to look at, you know, where are the darker areas of the feather that are farther away from the viewer and use your darkest color or your color that suggests darkness, your, your cooler color in those areas, and then use a warmer color in the other areas. You could do it all one color by just doing like this where you have darker tones than others. I have used Canson. Canson works great. Um, I I buy what's on sale. If the Canson's on, and I have some Canson around here somewhere. I've got wads of paper, you guys. You guys don't even know. <laughs> I've got lots of paper. I love, I love paper, evidently. <laughs> I can't say too much. All right. And I love that we use the brown pencil to outline this and it's blending a little bit with this paint and giving us a secondary color. Um, yeah, who doesn't? And I heard, I saw that post about the Sleeping Beauty turquoise. So when I first started collecting my Daniel Smith paints, which are my preferred brand, although I own some other brands and I like them, and at the moment I'm collecting May Mary, um, which I'm also intrigued by. They have some interesting colors. Um, I started collecting them one tube at a time. Um, I do have some student grade Van Gogh paints and they are fabulous. They You can get them at Hobby Lobby. They're a good starter paint. That's good to know. Um, and I've been known to go to Hobby Lobby and get one tube of paint with a 40% off coupon when I was building up my collection. So don't be afraid of doing that. So this is just one non-traditional color and look how pretty that is. How do you not just like that? <laughs> so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add just some darker values while the paint's still wet and it's gonna, it's gonna bleed and bloom a little bit without me doing too much. Hobby Lobby sells Van Gogh. I think that's about the highest end they get, but Van Gogh is a nice uh, watercolor paint. It's not Daniel Smith, but it's very nice. They have a decent selection of colors. The tubes are between $3.99 and I think $5.99 or $6.99 a tube. So I definitely would um, recommend looking into it. Um, at your local Hobby Lobby. And I, yeah, like I said, you know, one tube at a time. And when my local art supply store, fine art supply store, has their sales, I look to see if Daniel Smith is on sale. And if it is, then I go um, stock up on a tube. So that's not even done yet. And that's already pretty. So I'm not sure what other color I want to use. But in the meantime, let's finish with the turquoise. I'm going to turn my feather around just because it's easier for me to not stick my hand in something I don't want it stuck into. And also, too, if you don't have access to, you know, a fine art store or, you know, if you're, honestly, if you're like me and a few of you others that are on there, I know, who have trouble getting out, 
pink or magenta would be great a great color I have this opera pink color that's on here that we might use that um, then you know look for your sales um, if you have trouble getting out of the house like I do some days I just figure if you want to run people over with your car it's probably best you don't not drive then you know go to you know watch for sales at um, Dick Blick Jerry's Artorama I love um, any of you who are in the UK I love Jackson's art and even if you order um, from them here the shipping is decently priced and it's actually some of their stuff's cheaper than you can get it over here I love Jackson's if I lived in the UK I would probably want to live near Jackson's and it would probably be a huge problem because I spend a lot of money there yep this is gonna make a really great bookmark now a lot of times what I've been doing with these watercolor Wednesday paintings is I've been loading them into my Etsy shop as digital downloads that you guys can download and reprint you know for inspiration or to use in your journals or whatever don't forget to sign your work I'm always like forgetting so don't forget to sign your work we're not even done and look at that such a great idea all right so let's do a little bit of this opera pink color let me show you first this is one of my this is one of the reasons I love Daniel Smith look at this color opera pink oh Curry's art okay so this is the opera pink it's like a bright neon floor. I don't even know if it shows up how bright it is on camera. <laughs> so we're gonna take a little, a little bit of this goes a really long way. So we're gonna put just a bit here and there and then put some water. Daniel Smith is an American company. They have a really great line of paints, some unique pigments. Um, so the other thing I can tell you about signing your work that I learned the hard way. When I first started signing my work, I would sign my name just like I sign everything else, pay checks and everything. Don't do that. Come up with an art signature, something that, that's unique to your artwork that you use just for signing artwork. Okay. You, you sign with a logo, sign with something and put the date. They do have some interesting colors. I do own those um, and they're very different. They're something between a watercolor and a gouache I think um, they're more opaque um, or at least they seem to be to me but I like them and they're great for doing little projects like this um, if you want to just you know use inexpensive paints and you want to um, just make a bunch of you know bookmarks because you're have you're doing a, a craft sale or something um, you know maybe you want to use a lesser expensive watercolor paint the um, Gonzai paints would work, um, as would the Van Gogh paints. Uh, Hobby Lobby has um, the Gonzai paints. Um, I got mine with a 40% off coupon. So this is a really strong pigment. So one thing you see me doing is um, lifting with my rag. So we don't get too much of it. I'm gonna go back into my turquoise. You're welcome. I love the koi's are also a great paint. You're right. 
There's a lot of really great student paints out there that you can try. If you can afford a little bit more and you don't have to, you know, just use Crayola, there's some really great paints out there that you can get and try before you invest in something like the Daniel Smiths to see if you're going to like the medium. I'm adding some, just some little touches of a darker turquoise to my feather. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea if you have local art friends and you're all, you know, really into watercolor. Um, you know, sh see, bring some empty half pans and have a little arty party and, um, you know, share colors. That's a great way to um, build up your palette. I think Cindy Utter has the set of White Knight paints. I don't th think she's on right now, but my friend Cindy Utter, I believe, has the White Knight. Um, Jerry, you know Cindy, you can ask her. I believe she's got them. No, they're not. But for me, they're also not super available. I had to, um, I ha if I want to get them, I have to order them. So I'm really wanting to add a pop of black or neutral tint to this to make it really pop. So I'm going to do that. Oh, wait, am I going to do that or do I want to use pen? I might want to use pen. All right, let's put this one aside. I love this one. Let's go back to this one. And let's pick a pen. <laughs> I don't know. I have to figure out what size. Uh, that'll work. All right, so I've got a, my Staedtler pens. This is a 0.3 and this is a 0.7. So if you just add a few, uh, doesn't it? It's it, This is completely dry now. And if you just add, and you don't even have to outline the whole thing, just add a few marks here and there with your pen. The other thing too, remember that a lot of times a lot of these pens are permanent when they're dry, but when before they're dry, <laughs> you can go in here and, and I've done this plenty. If you guys have seen my journaling videos, I'm constantly spelling words wrong. <laughs> so, you know, I get in there, I start to write the word and I write it incorrectly. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the story of my life. <laughs> so you can smudge the pen just a little bit and it just gives your, you know, painting a little bit more something that's interesting. So I would not do any more than that to it. I would make sure that I come in here I, would, I try to sign it and put the year and then that's really interesting too. Sorry I missed that comment I was writing my name. Can you post that again? The other thing I thought would be fun to do on these while we're waiting to see if whoever that was that wrote that posted again, um, is I thought it would be fun if you Googled um, the translation for feather, or if you know what bird the feather comes from, that particular feather, in another language like French or German or Spanish, um, and you or Latin. What I was thinking was Latin, and you wrote the Latin word for the feather on the bookmark. I thought that would be interesting and fun and it would make it sort of look like um, field notes. Um, and I do have this other size pen here so you can go in and add some fatter lines. Mm. 
yeah I, I would consider that actually I've considered doing a live hangout where we have um, we actually get to paint together but um, the problem with that is that Google Hangouts done at my desktop and the camera setups not as easy so I, Periscope would be easier so here's this one let's see if this one's dry yeah it's dry now this video will be on um, YouTube hi how are you It's a good idea, Erin. Why don't you, if you're not my friend on Facebook yet, friend me, and then why don't you uh, message me about it? Um, or if you're in the Facebook group, message it in the Facebook group. And let's see if we can work out something. I don't want. I don't know what the next. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I don't know what the next. Um watercolor Wednesday next week is but we can we can start working on it for next week cool you can always email me through the email on my website Aaron Um, this is my Facebook name. My, my, everything I do is, yeah, it's okay. Nobody spells Aaron's right, including autocorrect. <laughs> so this is my name on everything. If you Google this name, I'm going to pop up everywhere. So sunflowers are next week. So if somebody, you know, Aaron has a great idea, as does Jerry. So you guys have to remind me, though, so that I remember when I get off the air <laughs> that I said I would do this. And I'll make myself some notes. And what I'll try to do on by Monday is do a blog post on my website and something through the Facebook group where we have inspiration photos for, um, I, I would love some feathers, Lisa, inspiration photos for the sunflowers and materials lists um, prepared ahead of time so that you guys um, are ready and you guys can paint along with me. Um, skulls, um, sunflowers are next week, Koi, but if you go to the Facebook group and you can go to the Watercolor Wednesday document and you can suggest skulls and we'll add it to the list. So now with this turquoise one, I'm going in with the black pen. Oh, cool. See, I didn't know that. And I'm just adding some of that, you know, hairs. I don't know what, what do you call them except hairs? I'm sure there's a technical name, like scientific name. I don't know what it is. And I'm not wanting to outline the whole feather, but I'm wanting to give it some interest, more interest. You know, don't ever feel like, yeah, that's a good question, B. So don't ever feel like with your watercolors, you can't accent and highlight your painting with some of your other mixed media supplies, like a black pen or, you know, if you've seen my Watercolor Wednesday YouTube videos, you know, I add splatters and, you know, I stamp with my rubber stamps and the idea is to create a piece of art, not to be a watercolor purist. I love my watercolors, but I'm by no stretch of the imagination a purist. And look at that, doesn't that look great? That's with the point three. This is the point seven. I'm not gonna add a lot of this because it's a much bigger nib, but I wanna add a little bit. I will be um, loading this video to Dropbox so that I can get it saved and put up on YouTube. It's a long process. It takes me like a day because the process is not great, but I will do that so you guys can replay it. And let's get this one signed. I'm really wanting to sign it in here. 
Let's get a smaller pen. I should really have my reading glasses on, but I don't. Okay. So you create something like this, and whether you're selling the original or you're wanting to make copies of it and just sell the copy and keep the original, you can put them in these plastic sleeves. They make great gifts. Or if you're doing a craft show, they make a great little, you know, inexpensive little thing to sell. You know, you could sell them for $5 each. The copies, like I said, $1.25. I sold hundreds and if not thousands of bookmarks in my day. I love the idea that Aaron and Jerry had. I think we can combine the two next week to do something unique for Watercolor Wednesday so that you guys are prepared a few days ahead of time and you have time to get your paints together, your paper together. Um, um, so we can paint together on Wednesday. I love that. Um, and we have an hour and these small little projects like bookmarks, you definitely can do in an hour. And I love doing these little bookmarks like we did last week. I have these, um, so I think that we're going to keep doing that, and we are going to, you know, do these little gifty things. The holidays are coming up, whether you are uh, celebrate Hanukkah or Christmas or some other winter holiday. Um, this is a time for giving gifts to your friends and family, and wouldn't I know my friends love when I give them a little piece of art, and I'm sure yours would love that too. It's like giving them a little piece of your soul. So wouldn't they love that? Is there any final questions? So you guys, Aaron and Aaron and Jerry, you guys have to remind me so I can work on that. <laughs> I'd rather do that than bookkeeping. So you know, which I still haven't done. Definitely, you can post your pictures in the group. I will help you if you want me to. Um, um, oh, see, somebody somebody looked it up for me. Oh, yay! Six puppies. Um, um, the group is for helping you with your art, um, a creative life, expressing yourself in a creative, healthy manner. That's what the group is about. So definitely you can post your pictures of what you've been working on. Um, the admins and I definitely will help you. And um, I mean, and it's a creative, safe place. We don't allow, you know, we have rule code, of, a code of conduct. So, um, you know, go into... Um, the rules when you get into the group and look at the code of conduct, you know, where you can post just about anything as long as you're nice, basically. You have to be nice. No nasty. <laughs> no nasties. And, uh, you know, don't forget to, you can find links to the Facebook group, my Etsy shop, and a bunch of other stuff, including my blog page and all that stuff on my website, including links to my old <laughs> daycare website and knitting website which I, those of you who only know me from YouTube don't know that about me <laughs> um, I've tried to remove the daycare stuff and knitting stuff a few times and people do not want it removed <laughs> I get tons of hate mail so it's still on there but you have to search for it um, I, do, I do sugar skulls occasionally so Cheryl add it to the list we'll do a sugar skull thank you so much love you guys too I, I can knit and crochet, do embroidery, all that stuff. <laughs> Maybe one of these days we'll do a periscope where we just do craft something crafty. <laughs> I have to give my hand a break. My arthritis is bothering me on the, in this hand. I actually, my finger feels bruised here. And I'm not sure if it's because I did too much left-handed art or what. I have to, uh, I did have a glove on before we came on camera. You're welcome. All of you guys have a great day. Do some watercolor painting, make some feathers, and if you want to do Periscope with other things besides painting, because really we have watercolors every Wednesday, acrylic painting every other Monday, if you want me to take a day once a month and do knitting, crochet, embroidery, something like that, let me know and message me through the Facebook group. Make sure you post something and tag me, something like that, and let me know and we'll work it out. And you guys all have a great day. Don't forget to um, do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Take a deep breath. I will post these to, yeah, everybody post your feathers to the group. I'm going to post mine 
and I'm also going to scan them. Um, and I have a couple more pieces of paper, so I'm probably going to do a few more. And I'm definitely going to order that book because I, I saw that book this morning. You're welcome. And if I come across reference books like that, I think that we're going to start a list today because I did order a few more reference books the other day. My admins and I have um, found a few books. Um, so we're going to start posting a list of watercolor reference books. Reference, And by that I mean reference for pictures. Name of Nook? Book. Oh, the book is called Bird Feathers. Hold on, hold on. I got it in my shopping cart. Hang on. Got to wake up the desktop. Bird Feathers, A Guide to North American Species. If you go to Amazon and you Google that, Bird Feathers, A Guide to North American Species, it should come up. The cover says Bird Feathers in a Red Triangle, and it has a bunch of feathers on it. Um, so I think you're going to like it. And we will um, add the um, Watercolor uh, Wednesday Reference Book Library list to the Facebook group. And... Um, yeah, if you have any questions, message, message me and or the admins through there. Make sure you tag me in the post, otherwise I sometimes miss things. And uh, that's it for now, I think. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great Wednesday and a great west, rest of the week and paint some feathers. You're welcome. Yeah, Lisa, post the link, link to the book and I'll look it up. The Facebook group name is A Life of Art and Self-Expression. You can find the link to it from my website here. And I'm going to go today to my website and I'm going to update my blog with the materials list for what we used today and the name of the book that I used today. Um, I'm a day late and a dollar short as my dad would say, but next week when we do sunflowers we will try to get all that posted by Monday. On, onto the website so make a note of this and I will post a link to said posting in the Facebook group all right you guys all have a great day and I will talk to you later bye hugs to you guys too and hug those puppies I love puppies